Right now, the vast majority of the clients I'm working with want browser-based technology. And I, I think that, that that is based on the perception that, A, it's cheaper to maintain, I mean, overall, right? I mean, making sure that you're compliant with a wide range of browsers. I still have clients that do medical streaming, for example. It's a niche market, so they can force people to always use Chrome, right? Like if you come to the site and you're, you know, you're a pharma rep and you are there in Safari, it's going to say, hey, you have to use Chrome. So in some ways, you know, we haven't gotten there yet with people's safety level or comfort. Uh, the good news is, app, you know, Apple was sort of the, the last sort of hold out for WebRTC, you know, and it's funny because like just as a low tech example or low level tech, you know, Safari supports VP codex now, but only in WebRTC. You can't throw a WebM file in a video tag and have it play in Safari. They don't they they don't want you to do that. And so, um, you know, there are uh, and that will probably change over time. Heck, it might have even changed while I'm talking. I don't know. But uh, the uh, um, or, or a month ago, I haven't tested it. But um, anyway, aside from that, um, I do find that, you know, that is one of the nice things about WebRTC. It, it is getting more and more established in, in, in browsers. And so therefore you can, you know, do this dev once, deploy everywhere kind of approach. Uh, and, and, you know, so I, again, it's, I think business requirements and Crystal brought it up before too, and, and Oliver with user experience. I mean, you know, I, I think, getting your pieces together so that they make sense. I mean, one of the things I really liked about working with, with Oliver at NanoCosmos when I was reviewing their platform was that they were doing things in a really sensible way, which, you know, you would hope happens more often than not. But, you know, when it comes, like, like this Zoom presentation, it matters that all of us have low latency, right? I want to be able to talk to you. You want to be able to cut me off or whatever. You know, it, it, it's that's important. But the people watching this and even commenting on the chat they don't need that low latency, right? Someone can ask a question right now and it can be delayed because we're in the middle of a conversation. Steve might pick it up and, you know, bring it to someone's attention, but they don't have to be watching this broadcast in, in ultra low latency, right? And that's how NanoCosmos has built their platform, right? Like we, if we were using NanoCosmos for this, we would be doing this over WebRTC, but they've built it so that this their ingest will automatically put push out an hls or WebSocket version of this that's much cheaper to you know maintain and enhance and still give that quality of experience that people need in in that situation so i think that's part of the trickiness right now is that you know figuring out how, and crystal you brought this up again too like just getting all those parts working together so that they satisfy the business requirements it makes fiscal sense the way you're deploying it and uh, uh you know again I, I think the hardest thing for me is when i get startups that want to offer a free version of their service as well as a premium version of their service so like a freemium model um and they they look at price tags like oh i don't want to pay you know, 500 or $1,000 a month to a platform. It's just like, well, you realize your dev costs are going to be astronomical compared to just starting with a platform that is doing a lot of that for you anyway.